The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a health care partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Financially Fit Podcast. I am your host, Andre Creighton. I really appreciate you all being here with me today and sharing this time together. For those that continue to come back to the show, I appreciate your unwavering support. And for those that are new, welcome to the podcast, and I hope that you find something fruitful out of our conversation today on your way in your journey to becoming financially fit. So today I have a question for you all. Does your credit card statement tell you that it's going to take 30 years to pay off your debt? Are you drowning in credit card debt? Well, if you are, if you answered yes to those questions, today you're tuning into the right episode because we're going to help you figure out how we can reverse that where you can get to a point where you're leveraging those credit cards and you no longer are drowning and feeling as though there's there's this huge mountain top that you have to climb to uh, and it seeming insurmountable. So today... Um, you know, there was a point in my life where I was drowning in credit card debt. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of the times when I reflect back on that time period, it was me living out of my means and trying to live a lifestyle that um, I didn't necessarily need to live. It was more of a want than a need. And really uh, being able to climb out of that has really helped me on my path to changing my 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 mindset psychologically to understand what I need to do to set myself up to be financially fit, right? Um, so with that being said, you know, step one is really coming to realization of the problem. You know, there's a lot of the mind, there's a lot of research and that talks about how the psychology around the way you think about money um, influences a lot of your decisions. And what I will say is the mind is a very powerful thing. Uh, if you can start to train your mind to think differently about money and the way that you use credit cards and being able to understand and maybe even running your personal life a little bit like a business, uh, especially from your personal banking account standpoint, I think that that's going to help you kind of change uh, that that mindset on what you need to do on your journey to becoming financially fit. But before we do all of that, you have to come to the realization that if you are drowning in credit card debt, what caused you to drown to drown in that credit card debt? Is it decisions that you made? Is it that um, you didn't have an emergency savings account? Is it that you had something negative happen in your life that maybe you lost your job um, and you had to be able to pay for the necessities to live and you had to lean on credit cards to be able to do those things, whatever it is, we need to understand what is the culprit of why I'm in this debt, right? So that's number one. Once we do that, then we can start to take steps to figure out what is the solution, right? For me, as I said, it was me living outside my means, right? So I had to train myself to start to think about separating my wants and my needs, right? And that doesn't mean that you can't get any of the things that you want but how do I start to budget and how do I start to be able to um, plan for those things that I want, right? And not just getting the things that I want in the moment and financing them, right? That's not the, the, the pathway to becoming financially fit. So that's number one, realization of the problem. Number two, um, I want all of you to make an Excel spreadsheet. And in that Excel spreadsheet, I want you to l- have a column that lists all of the credit cards you have. So if you have a Discover card or a Chase card, I want you to list them all out. After that, I want you to list out the balance of that card, okay? So that when I say the balance of that card, I mean how much do you owe in credit card debt for that specific card? I then want you to take the availability of that card or your credit limit. So whatever your limit is 
on that card. I want you to add that. And I want you to be able to divide those two numbers and come to what your utilization is for each card, okay? That's going to help you because we want to make sure we keep that utilization under 30. So there's a couple of different ways, and we'll talk about methodology and, and some ways to attack this. Um, but I also want you to include the interest rate, and then I want you to include what the minimum payment is per month for each card. And if you can do those things and set those columns up, then you'll start to be able to understand what cards I need to attack first, right? Um, and what I will say is it will help you as we talk about the snowball method and, and some of the ideologies around like how do we um, utilize that method to hopefully get ourselves out of credit card debt. But before you do any of that, I need to list those things out um, for yourself because that's going to help you along your way to making sure that you can stay on track and be able to see how track your progress and understand how are you doing as you're progressing towards your end goal so that's number two number three um we want to implement the snowball method and what the snowball method basically is is we're going to set up and my my practices is, is i like to set up all of my cards that i've owed on um, on, put them on automatic payment for the minimum payment, okay? That's going to ensure that we don't miss any credit cards not being paid. We're not. We're going to be able to avoid late fees. Um, those are some of the things that, that really drive up um, the inability to, to make progress on paying those cards off. So number one is if we can set up those on automatic payment for the minimum, that will help. The next thing that we need to decide is how are we going to attack this thing? You know, I talked about the utilization rate. Do we want to start to pay down the ones that have the highest utilization rate? Do we want to start to pay down the ones that have the highest interest rate? Do we want to start with the lowest balance and get an early win? Ultimately, that decision is deep. Um, what I will tell you, though, is great financial principles tell us that we should always start with the highest interest rate. Why should we do that? Well, the highest interest rate, um, if we start with the highest interest rate, we know that we are paying off the debt that is accumulating the most interest that's also increasing likely our minimum payment or our inability to be able to pay off other debt, right? So if we're able to start to focus on that higher interest rate, that will start to be able to allow us to kind of take a trickle down effect of highest interest rate to lowest interest rate, right? Um, the other piece to, and, and I say sometimes, most times, sorry, that is important to start with the highest interest rate. There are other times where you might look at and say, hey, I want to start with the lowest balance. Why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to start with the lowest balance because Maybe you just need to get a, a, a early win, right? Maybe you owe $500 on a card and maybe you plan to put $1,000 a month towards a snowball, uh, snowballing your debt. Well, maybe you just need to get an early win, right? And pay off that $500 card. And now hopefully that's helping with your mental, like, wow, I can do this, right? Now that I have some structure. So while that might not be the most... Um, cost saving strategy, right? Because if you're not starting with those highest highest interest rate cards, um, you're going to accumulate more interest. However, the biggest thing is that we need to be able to pay off the debt. So wherever we need to start, we have to decide that. One thing that um, someone always said to me, uh, actually, it's one of my co-founders, Jazz. He says this all the time that we cannot let perfection get in front of progress, right? So whatever is going to work and help you progress and be able to get into a better financial situation, we need to be able to do that. Um, maybe we want to start with the utilization, right? Maybe you are looking to buy, purchase a new home uh, in the near future, right? And you want to be able to get your utilization rate down because it's impacting your credit card or, or sorry, your credit score. Um, this could be a method as well um, to also help you get out of debt. But ultimately, from my perspective, that's kind of the last resort from, from my perspective. Um, but you have to choose what works for you. The next one is we need to figure out how much residual income that we have, right? 
I talked about, I gave an example of, you know, someone having a thousand dollars and being able to apply that to the snowball method. Well, you need to figure out how much of residual income do I have per month and how much can I apply to my debt? Because what we're going to want to do while all of those are set on the set on automatic to pay the minimum, we're going to want to take whatever strategy we've chosen, whether it's highest interest rate credit card, um, choosing the highest utilization credit card, or starting with the lowest balance. We want to take all of that money and we want to dump it into whatever um, method that we decided on. With that, once we pay off one of those cards completely, then we're going to take that minimum payment that we had along with that snowball money and we're going to drop it on and start paying down the next card. And we're going to do that over and over and over again until we've paid off the cards. That's why it's called the snowball effect because it's like an avalanche, right? Rolling down a mountain until we reach the bottom of the mountain. Um, we we want to continue to continue um, to put to kind of have that snowball method. Okay. Um, the last thing is uh, commit to the plan. You have to commit to the plan. None of this works. I can tell you all the methodologies, all the ideologies around how to get out of credit card debt. But at the end of the day, if you can't commit to the plan, then it doesn't matter what I tell you. Because at the end of the day, you're going to you're gonna hear this show. You're going to leave here. You may be inspired, right? You may be in a point where you're like, I'm, I'm ready to do this. But... I'm not going to be there every day to be able to say like, all right, let's stick to our goal, right? Hopefully something that you heard today resonates with you and you keep that in the back of your mind and your little file cabinet and you're able to take that and say, okay, I remember Andre talking about this on the podcast. I want to make sure that I implement this and I want to make sure that I stay true to not only one, understanding the realization of the problem, but also committing to the plan and tracking my progress. So if you can real, if you can come to the realization of the problem, if you can commit to the plan and track your progress, those are the things that are most important. All of the stuff in between that I talked about, whether it was creating a spreadsheet, uh, whether it was impl implementing the snowball method, whether it was figuring out um, how much residual income you have, all of those things, we can do, but we can't do those things until we actually have changed our mindset, both on realizing the problem and then committing to the plan, which is a solution, right? So with that being said, I hope that you all learned something in this um, podcast today. I hope that you take some time to think about what is your way of getting out of debt if you are drowning in debt, right? How do I put myself in a better position? Because as I always say, the power is in how much money you keep, not how much money you make. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. People say we're made up. Tall tales. Myths. Think what you want about us, but we can all be certain of this. Recycling is real, and it works. But what happens to your recycling once it leaves your home? Recycled glass is sorted in St. Paul. Then the clear glass is made into bottles for drinks, pickles, salad dressing, and more in Shakopee. At other facilities, plastic bottles get made into new plastic bottles. Recycling exists. Learn the real story behind recycling. It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. 
That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025. Making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits, so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. You know Shaletta makes you laugh, but did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business. Are you older? Or do you live with health conditions that put you at risk for a severe illness with COVID-19? Then be sure to contact your health care provider right away if you test positive. Your provider may prescribe an antiviral medication that comes in the pill form. You may benefit from these medications that are effective in preventing severe illness, hospitalization, and even death from COVID-19. Even if your symptoms are mild, don't delay because the treatment must be started within five to seven days from the start of the symptoms to work effectively. Antiviral medications may be available for free or at a low cost. Ask your provider or pharmacist if you are eligible for a patient assistance program to cover the out-of-pocket costs. These antiviral medications are no substitute for prevention. COVID-19 is circulating in our community this winter, so stay up to date with your vaccinations is still recommended for everyone over the age of six months, and vaccines are especially important for those who are at higher risk. Are you a woman known as a good listener? Do you have skills in de-escalating situations? Are you what they call a people person? then the Minneapolis Police Department would like to meet you. Now in a rebuilding phase, the Minneapolis Police Department is recruiting more women to wear the badge. The department offers career options for women with a high school diploma or GED. There are also opportunities for women with two and four year degrees who are ready to apply their skills in new ways. Police work makes a great second career for social workers, teachers, nurses. Women in their 30s and 40s are welcome to apply. There's no age cap. You'll be paid while you train and mentored by veteran women officers invested in your success. Minneapolis also welcomes current police officers to join the state's largest department. Make a difference on the streets, working in your community, in a career with competitive salaries and generous benefits. Go to MinneapolisMN.gov and search police jobs to find out more. If you live in an older home, it may contain lead-based paint on walls, woodwork, and windows. Even more bad news, lead exposure can be dangerous to young children and impact their brain development. And now, the good news. Hennepin County will fix lead hazards in your home at no cost to you. We were worried because of the paint in the windows in the bedroom. They were peeling and chipping, and we know that when paint peels and chips, and it looks a certain way that's possibly lead. We were worried for our children more so than anything. Eligible homes can qualify for up to $15,000 in upgrades. You may even qualify for new energy efficient windows. Don't worry, Hennepin County has a trusted list of pre-approved contractors. You won't even have to find companies with correct licenses or certifications. I've just done a test and it, it's positive. So we know that this is lead-based paint and then we know it's a hazard because it's creating dust every time this window moves and opens. And if you look in here, that's just full of lead paint chips. You won't have to stay with your cousin while you're getting the lead out. 
Hennepin County even pays for you and your family to stay in a hotel while the work is underway. The last good news is how easy it is to apply. Just go to hennepin.us backslash lead control to get started. I'm really happy with the program. We can go to bed knowing that our children are safe. That's hennepin.us backslash lead control. Tell your friends about it. 